Welcome back. Welcome back to Kenton and Habiba. I have a very busy afternoon today. I didn't even have time for an intro. Anyway, I was inspired to set up a really romantic dinner date for my husband based on an episode of Homeworthy I watched where the lady um, set up a little table in the middle of the living room. And so that's what I'm planning to do today. So I'm going to need to push back some of the furniture. You can see I have an electric blanket right down there in the corner, that light blue mess that you see. Yeah. Anyway, so much to do. We're going to have to clean. Um, I have piles of dirt. <laughs> I have my exercise stepper there. Yeah, there's the pile of dirt. That's not cute. That's not romantic. That has to go. So yeah, so much to do. Okay, so I have a few hours to get this done. <laughs> now you see I have a long table, a long formal dining room table. It can hold about 10 people, four on each side and then two on the ends. But I don't want to use that because I want a very romantic table for two. Like I just want a small, cozy space. I also have this large circular wooden table, antique table, and it sits up to seven people because I've had my husband, kids, mother, and brother seated at the same time. So it's too large. But then I thought, what about the table outside? The garden table. It is dusty. It is dirty. It's been sitting out all winter, but it's the perfect size use what you have instead of going to buy something new repurpose what you have it's perfect and i'm gonna clean it up and i'm gonna bring it inside and it's gonna work for two people <laughs> can't wait so i'm super excited to set this little table i love when i have an idea or i am inspired to do something and i know it's going to happen <laughs> So first, let's clean up because after I clean up, I have to move the furniture and then uh, put in the table, set up the table, and then, of course, cook. Okay, so I'm just trying to get rid of some of these things that are on the coffee table. And actually, I'm going to end up moving the coffee table. But first, let's mop. Um, you know, if you're going to clean, you might as well clean, right? And it's a good workout. Let's get rid of the electric blanket. And I love this thing. I like sitting in that chair, that recliner with the blanket and it's so cozy in the evening. All right, so I'm just moving the couch back and it's, you know, it's not hard, easy to do. And then let's clean off this table, this disgustingly dirty garden table. It is the perfect size and y'all, it's going to clean up really well. Don't worry, I'm gonna scrub it several times. Now it's time to bring in the table. I'm just going to center it to the rug, but also to the fireplace. It might need a little adjusting. Yay, I think that's good, great. <laughs> and I know some of you are still a little skeptical, like how is this ugly table going to create a vibe? <laughs> Anything is possible, honey. Anything is possible when you put your mind to it. All right, we need tablecloths. So I have two white tablecloths and I'm gonna put that to cover the table. I'm actually listening to gospel music as I'm doing this. And um, I love gospel music. <laughs> but I'm about to have a moment that I did not expect. Um, I, I don't know, I just get so like happy but emotional also and I literally just started to cry, literally started to cry. Now don't blame it on menopause because your girl still hasn't gone through it yet, <laughs> not really. And I've always been an emotional person but honestly when I listen to gospel music and I praise God and I'm just so thankful. Sometimes it just brings me to tears. Anybody else like that? Yeah, I was really crying for real. All right, table is done. Well, not really done, but the tablecloth is on. Time to bring in the chairs. 
Next, I'm going to add some candlesticks for a little bit of height. So just some simple tapered candles. And then I'm adding some chargers just to define the space. And then a dinner plate and then a salad plate or it could be used for dessert. Um, either one, but it's like a dinner plate, salad plate, knife and fork. You know, we need some cutlery, of course. Then I'm adding these crystal goblets that I got from Macy's during the holiday season. Very pretty. And some wine glasses. Instead of a large bouquet of flowers that may block our faces, I'm using two bud vases and these roses. These are roses that Kenton had given me. You would have seen that in a previous video. And I'm also adding some tea lights. So we have the height from the tapered candles and the tea lights on a lower level. You know how some women on social media love to tell you, I'm obsessed, I'm totally obsessed. And you know they're exaggerating, right? Well, no, honey, seriously, I'm obsessed with these napkin holders because they look like pieces of art, okay? Look at the detail of the fork and the knife and the spoon. And I just love that kind of goldish brass color. They look amazing on these cloth napkins that I have. So I bought these napkin holders at a thrift store. They only had two pairs, which works out perfect for today, but I really wish they had more and I would have bought more. So the table looks great, but a little plain. So I'm going to jazz it up with some rose petals for a little bit of color. And you know, this was actually filmed for Valentine's Day, but I didn't actually get a chance to share it with you. These are actually the same roses Kenton gave me a few days ago. You might have seen the reel that I did with them. They're still holding on. Anyway, I'm going to end up putting them on the mantle or fireplace mantle because again, I don't want to block our faces by putting it on the table. I'm also going to add this cherry and clove candle because I like the red color of the glass. And then to balance the opposite side of the mantle, I thought I would do a simple DIY. So I'm just taking some petals from a rose and adding that to the cylindrical vases, adding some water to that. I fill up the vase a little over three quarters of the way, basically leaving enough room for me to be able to put a tea light in there. So yeah, make sure the tea light is balanced and floats very nicely surrounded by petals and it's gonna look so pretty when it's lit. You know I love plants and because we like to give ourselves more work to do, we decided to lift this heavy plant and bring it, you know, to the corner of the room. I mean, I just think it created a nice vibe, you know, kind of elegant and just having the two peace lilies diagonal from each other across the room just created balance. Some of you might remember this mini birch tree. I didn't know what to do with it. I ended up hanging these heart-shaped ornaments from Christmas on it because it looked, you know, appropriate for the occasion. Now let's focus on the menu. To stay organized, I write it out. This really is very helpful, you know, to see what I'm planning to make, even though I'm not making that much, honestly. But it kind of keeps me organized and I like that. Regarding the rum cake, it was made in advance. So typically I usually make large round cakes, right, for Christmas. And I use the recipe found in the Caribbean fruit cake, the book I wrote a couple of years ago. It is linked in the description box, right? Now, most people think of Caribbean fruit cake or rum cake or black cake for Christmas only, but honestly, you can have it at any occasion. And I actually made gluten-free versions of cupcakes. That is black cake, but gluten-free. What? Yep, that recipe is also in the book. So anyway, time to do some mashed potatoes. We've got our russet potatoes, just your basic American, I don't even know if they're American, but you know, basic russet potatoes. And then I realized, hello, we gotta do fried plantain. I have to honor my African and Caribbean side with some plantain. Who would I be? And Kenton loves plantain too. <laughs> So there is the final menu. Before I start cooking, I'm going to make the dessert first because that will need to set. So I have some standard strawberries, large red 
juicy sweet strawberries to make chocolate covered strawberries. Aren't they pretty? And then I also have this different variety, which they're supposed to be like slightly pink, but they kind of look whitish to me or off white, but they're supposed to taste like a cross between strawberries and pineapple. So they are really juicy because I went ahead and tasted them and they really do have a slight taste of pineapple. So first we're gonna wash our strawberries really well. You can soak them in a little bit of water and apple cider vinegar or apple cider vinegar and a little bit of baking soda. But anyway, rinse them off properly and then dry them. Pat them dry, kind of like a baby's bottom. <laughs> very gently you know just be nice to the strawberries but make sure they're clean and there is no more water because the chocolate will not stick to it if it's wet so i have recruited son number two to help me make some mashed potatoes because he makes the best mashed potatoes and everything i'm making today honestly can be cooked in under an hour but of course i'm kind of slowed down because i'm filming this in addition to making stuff so it's nice to kind of have help but anyway we're gonna need some parchment paper and that's because when you're working with chocolate the strawberries will stick to the plate if you didn't have the parchment paper so it's so much easier when you have some parchment paper um, while working with chocolate I will be using premium baking chocolate Girardelli that's like my favorite brand at the moment because it is gluten-free like there's no added you know extra stuff like wheat so I can tolerate it fine anyway I'm going to use about a cup so the bag comes with two cups so I'm using half a bag or about a cup side note cutting the potatoes in small cubes will allow you to cook them really quickly especially when you're pressed for time yeah cut them small and it will cook within a few minutes you can melt the chocolate chips above boiling water like a double layer or simply a few seconds in the microwave which is what I did but don't overdo it because the chocolate would go really hard so yeah um, stop the microwave when the chips look like they are about to start melting and then just mix as you see okay so if you don't like your fingers messy maybe you need to wear gloves or you could use a skewer or a fork but I'm using my fingers it does get a little messy but not too bad anyway onto the parchment paper and yeah just keep doing it that strawberry there could have had more chocolate <laughs> you see that one in the middle yeah it needs more chocolate Now that I finished dunking the strawberries in the chocolate, I'm gonna go ahead and um, sprinkle some coconut, sweetened coconut flakes on some of them. Not all of them, just some of them because Kenton really likes coconut and it's a nice kind of contrast. You could get totally creative and drizzle like white chocolate on it or some, you know, um, gold or silver edible flakes or dust. All right, let's start cooking. So I have this beautiful large piece of wild caught salmon. So not farm raised, but wild caught salmon and it comes fresh. So it's not frozen, but fresh. And I have an onion and some pepper. So I've taken it out of the package and this fish is beautiful, but it's definitely a lot larger than I need. So I'm going to section some of it off and I will also need to remove the scales. So yeah, we're gonna go ahead and cut a piece um, that I will cook today and then the rest will be frozen. But I will also need to scale it and then wash it really well. So I like to wash the fish with some apple cider vinegar and or lemon, lemon or lime, either one, but you gotta have some sort of acid to clean the fish. And then again, you need to scale it. Okay, I have washed and scaled the fish and I'm cutting it into fillets. 
and you can see the color has changed because of the apple cider vinegar so this is what happens when you clean the fish with lemon lime or apple cider vinegar I'm turning on the stove and now I'm going to season the fish really well we like spice in this house <laughs> And so I'm using some fish seasoning on this. Um, yeah, lots of fish seasoning. You can also use all-purpose seasoning like adobo, mashed potatoes looking good. I have a big pan here and I'm adding some olive oil to that, just a few tablespoons to cover the bottom, um, you see? So not too much, just a little bit. And then I'm adding some more seasoning onto the fish. Again, the back and the front fish seasoning black pepper garlic powder paprika whatever seasoning you like okay and into the pan it goes the oil should be hot um, because if the oil isn't too hot it might stick depending on the type of you know pan you have but in this case the fish is not sticking so that's good and um, this is a pretty good new pan so Anyway, into the pan the salmon goes and uh, I'm going to add some scotch bonnet because I love scotch bonnet. It gives it a very Caribbean flavor. So I don't even cut open the bonnet, the pepper. Um, and then I'm also adding some thyme, fresh thyme. I always keep like a bunch of fresh thyme in the freezer so that I can throw it in my cooking when I need it because you know if you kept fresh thyme like in the refrigerator not frozen it would spoil quick so the freezer is a good place to keep it just like the scotch bonnets I keep a number of them in a bag in the freezer all right our fish is looking good the edges are nice and crispy that's what we want flip them over so you know when it comes to meat I like stuff well done okay because sometimes, I hate to say it, but if you eat meat that's not cooked or, you know, not cooked properly, you can get parasites. It is a fact that sometimes salmon can have parasites. I hate to think about that, but yeah. Anyway, I'm using some soy sauce. This is tamari Japanese soy sauce, and it is gluten-free, okay? So if you buy the nice soy sauce it comes gluten free but the regular stuff in the supermarket the regular schmegular stuff <laughs> they add wheat i'm also adding a dollop of ketchup this will make a nice sauce because it gives it the little vinegar you know vinegar goes well with um fish and you get that sweet and also vinegar and the ketchup so that's why I use it but it doesn't overpower the fish so you're not using a lot of ketchup just a little and you let this simmer for a little bit a few more minutes and then it's done it's that quick it's that quick you get the like crispy edges of the salmon and the seasoning Ooh. And this is a really big pan, by the way. And then I squeeze out the juice from the pepper that gets all over the onions and the bell peppers. All right, I'll let this simmer for a little bit. Of course, we need some vegetables. Today, it's asparagus, a very elegant vegetable. Very good for you and very easy to cook. So you literally just have to wash it. Well, first cut off the ends and then wash it and then steam it. So simple. And if you want, you can add a little bit of butter to it. But yeah, just make sure you wash it before you steam it. And don't overcook it. If you overcook it, it comes out kind of mushy and it loses its texture and kind of stringy. Anyway, our fish is done. It is spiced up. It is mm, looking and smelling so good. And dinner is almost ready. All right, let's do some plantain. Comment below if you have had plantain and you don't like plantain. You are banished from this channel. <laughs> 
you cannot eat plantain and not love plantain. Of course, we all have to be careful with it because it is sweet and has a lot of calories. So if you're watching your sugar or your weight, you can't eat too many plantains, at least not fried. You can try to bake them or roast them. But you know what? The truth is they taste better when they're fried. And I know I'm a doctor. I should be telling you otherwise, but I'm not going to lie to you. They taste better fried, but they are healthier roasted or steamed. Okay, everything's done. Now all I have to do is quickly put something decent on. You know, I'm not going to get super dressed up. Just something prettier than a t-shirt and an apron. Um, right? If you're going to make the place look nice, you might as well go all the way. What did I say? Dress for success. <laughs> make him feel special or make her feel special. Um, let's see, what else? Yeah, so all I have to do is get dressed and then light the candles and then I'll have him come downstairs. Before I get dressed, let's put on some romantic music to set the vibe. Want to know exactly what's in your P.O. box without calling or getting in the car? Wouldn't it be great if you can met it? So this is the dress I decided to wear. You may have seen this clip before. Remember this dress from Timu that I thought made me look like a mother-in-law? This is the dress I decided to wear. So thanks to editing and movie magic, I'm wearing, you know, makeup in these clips. But in reality, I'm actually not even going to bother with makeup. But I did put on some jewelry. And you can see that my nails are done. I've got ring. I've got bracelet. Now it's time to light the candles. So I'm going to get everything ready before I have Kenton come downstairs. I'm sure he's hungry by now. And um, I hope he likes it. <laughs> he does so much for me. He always tries to make me feel special. So this is just my small way of making him feel special. So I kept Kenton from coming downstairs. He has not seen anything. He doesn't know what I cooked. He hasn't seen the setup at all. All right, you can come. I really love how everything turned out, the setup, the table in the middle of the living room, the fireplace going, 
um, just the two of us sitting on this simple table, eating very simple food in my opinion, you know, this is food I could have cooked on any other day, but it felt special because it just felt like we were at a different place. And um, yeah, really sweet, really romantic. Oh, yeah, I wonder if I should just leave this table here. <laughs> it would be funny to leave it here, right? No. Mm. Hard to watch TV, right? Mm. I'm really not here. Sit on the couch. Really. Like I said before, this was inspired by an episode of Homeworthy that I had watched. And I absolutely adore this idea. And I also adore the idea of doing this for someone else. Like setting up a table for someone else that's too busy or that's too stressed out, you know, going to their house and setting a table. What an expression of love and kindness, right? I certainly encourage you to try this for yourself or to try this with a friend or for a friend. It feels special, you know? And I like that I reused things I already owned, that I didn't go out and buy a new table or buy new plates. Everything I already had. The only thing that was new was the food. So yeah, definitely a success. <laughs> and I definitely see doing this again, maybe in the spring, perhaps a tea party related theme. And I just wanted you to see my fish. You see the outside is nice and crispy and the inside is nicely well done. Delicious with Kareem's mashed potatoes. So good. Look at that, look at that. <laughs> The strawberries and the chocolate have set. They've been in the fridge for about an hour and they look beautiful and I can't wait to bite into them. <laughs> good. I'll put one of these ones. Ooh, if you could smell this. Ooh, if you could smell this. Not gonna lie, these cupcakes have a substantial amount of rum. <laughs> Wine, fruit, and rum. All right, I'm just slicing some strawberries for a garnish. And my rum cakes or black cakes have been warmed up slightly because I like them kind of warm so that they have the texture of English pudding, you know, with heavy liqueur. And then I'm just adding some vanilla ice cream. So because the cake is super rich, you only need something simple when it comes to the ice cream. Keep it simple. I mean, you could have it with unsweetened whipped cream if you want or icing, but I feel like icing would have been too sweet. So that's why I just went with simple vanilla ice cream and slices of strawberry. So again, black cake is not just for Christmas. I think it is perfect for a romantic date or any special occasion. Thank you so much for taking the time to watch this romantic dinner date video. I hope you were inspired and I hope you will also check out my book, The Caribbean Fruitcake, which again is linked in the description box. Bye. Okay, go ahead. It's on. Do I say nobody? Yeah, if there's, they're not going to hear it. Uh, it's all mine. That's all I'm saying is nobody. Yeah. Oh, nobody? <laughs> nobody? <laughs> <laughs> Nobody? Make it Indian. Nobody?
Boo! Nobody? Nobody? <laughs> Nobody? Oh my god!